Cora, and I'm joined on the desk this time with That's Admirable. And, uh, you know, I'm not exactly surprised that my predictions didn't hold up. I, I don't generally have a good track record with predicting things, but it is a little bit sad that Chalky is already out of the tournament. How about your predictions, Admirable? Um, yeah, I mean, it's sad that Chalky's out of the tournament, but it's only fitting that you're staying with the model of uh, not being able to nail the right picks at any step of the way I mean, the rest of the casters. I, I think we should just keep it rolling from last week. And, uh, you know, it's it's sort of what the caster track record is, is <laughs> been looking like so far. But no matter, we do have a great next match coming up for you guys. It's going to be Terrence M versus Abar. Terrence actually had a really nice finish at DreamHack Austin, came in second to Chalky. And then Abar, we don't actually know much about. He's sort of one of those unknown players. Yeah, for Abar, the thing that it sticks out most to me, uh, reading a lot about like deck lists and stuff that kind of go around, is he actually in May peaked at number one with a Reno Mage deck. Uh, early on in the season. I think it was about eight or nine days into the season he peaked there. That's impressive. Um, curious where he actually finished in that season, but it was a very strange-looking deck list that had just pretty much a card that tried to answer every particular major card in the format you could mm -hmm. think of. Uh, and so if you play a deck like that and you manage to draw all those tools in a row versus the matchups, you will win a lot of games. That's kind of how those <laughs> Reno toolbox decks work. Yeah, well, maybe we'll be seeing some interesting tech choices from him in the match today. But it looks like we've got our bands. Both Abar and Terrence have banned Warrior. So a little bit of what we kind of expected to see after last week's Europe preliminaries. That's uh, pretty much been the standard. And then we've got Abar with the Druid, Shaman, and Warlock. Terrence with the Mage, Shaman, and Warlock. So what do you think about these lineups? So with Abar typically hearing that he peaked with Reno Mage at number one, you would think that he's the player playing sort of the uh, non-standard list here. His Druid, Shaman, and Warlock look pretty straightforward. With Terrence, though, he's got Freeze Mage in there, and he's also got a sh very strange, heavy Shaman control style deck featuring Halazeel and what mm -hmm. I believe was Bog Creepers and just all sorts of endgame stuff that's packed in there to make sure that he can continue to taunt up and leverage that board position for massive card advantage later on. And that's very much against what we've seen most of the Shamans do so far, uh, pretty much since uh, Wisps of the Old Gods came out. Yeah, I think we've only actually seen one of those Bog Creeper Shaman decks today, but they have definitely proven that they're very strong in certain matchups, Zoo specifically, because they do have so much board clear, so much ability to regain health. So they definitely do have strengths in this tournament, and Abar does have that Warlock. So there's a good chance that uh, Terrence's... His, his game plan could actually work out for him pretty well this time. Yeah, I mean, it's been working fantastically for him so far. I mean, at this stage of the tournament, we're in round seven. Uh, that, that's a great win mm -hmm. rate uh, that deck has been putting up. I think it is a little bit matchup based, but for sure. But I, it can definitely perform versus some of the faster decks. If you just happen to draw the right tools and your opponent doesn't have an answer at the perfect time, something like, a, like an Earth Elemental can just take over the game if your opponent just stumbles a turn on that. Absolutely, and we're going to go ahead and get right into the first game, and it is going to be the ever-wonderful Zoo Warlock Mirror. And Abar is going to be on the coin, which does give the Zoo uh, a little bit of an advantage if he does have double one-drops and Terrence perhaps doesn't get the perfect hand. But both guys are certainly skilled players, so this is, this is a matchup that tends to be very one-sided. Yeah, I'm curious to see how Terrence was going to play this. I'm, I'm a lot of times I see players kind of just keep the curve that they have if they have a one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. But the zoo matchup is so much about favoring the a player who gets to dictate the first trade. You typically want to have not only Flame Imp as a very strong minion, but you want to have strong follow-ups to it as well. Uh, so not playing Darkshire Councilman on turn three isn't necessarily where you want to be in this matchup. It's mostly about flooding and then trying to find a favorable trade amongst those minions. Absolutely. And actually, the three drop, I would say that you most want to see, just came into Abar's hand. It's the Imp Gang boss. Definitely able to dictate very favorable trades in this matchup, able to give you board presence even after trading. So for sure, the one that you're going to want to see, Abar does not have the one drop I think he would like. Possessed Villager is nice if you can follow it up with, you know, something like uh, the Abusive Sergeant. He does have the Knife Juggler, but it's a little bit, uh, a little bit sketchy on whether or not he's actually going to be able to clear off this Flame Imp or not. Yeah, with, with Terrence's position here, that tack is a little bit surprising to me. Um, so he's very concerned about getting Knife Juggler value at some point in this matchup. Uh, in this particular spot, there were two major options for Terrence, which number one was to be relentlessly pressing the board issue and forcing a bar to have the right answers. Uh, in this particular situation, the knife juggler would have very likely gone unchecked 
if he'd have gone ahead and played it. But his concern is the range of options Abar can have, which goes all the way from, from Dark Peddler into Mortal Coil to Abusive Sergeant to even just playing an Imp Gang boss on the board can look frightening in that spot. So he's choosing to take it a lot more slow here and figure out a situation where he can set up a good trade. And this might just be a catalyst to unlocking Darkshire Councilman. I actually like the trade there. It is definitely the safe play, but because we do see the knife juggler in Abar's hand, obviously we know that he would have been able to get some value off of trading that possessed villager on his own. So this way, Terrence denies that value and is able to hopefully dictate some of the trades on his own terms, which is definitely what you want to do as the zoo deck. So Abar does have that imp gang boss on board, but Terrence is still slightly ahead, seeing as now he's played the Darkshire Councilman, which hopefully he'll be able to buff up significantly in the next couple of turns. Yeah, this is uh, the turns I think it's starts to get a little bit scary for Terrence. Uh, despite the fact that he got the Councilman down, it's, I feel like it's a relatively weak turn. And he's staring down an Imp King boss that's about to run over a Voidwalker, and then also three more mana worth of development from Abar. So this is a situation where Terrence, I think, feels a little bit uncomfortable, and especially so when this is happening. Yeah, he would have definitely much rather had something like uh, Direwolf Alpha, an abusive sergeant, to trade into that Imp Gang boss. And wow. that is just the knife juggler we, we know and don't always love, because a lot of the times you're on the receiving end of those knives. Yeah, Defender of Argus. It's definitely the clunkiest card in the hand. It's by far the hardest one for Terrence to use. Just going to unlock the potential for it now and try to get some recovery. But there is plenty more in Abar's hand to continue to answer this board state. I am feeling really shaky for Terrence this game. If he's able to pick up a Forbidden Ritual, he does still have the Knife Juggler in hand. So he would have to clear off the Imp Gang boss and then, you know, start so throwing his own knives out on the board and seeing if he can get some of those favorable trades. But you're right, it's it's looking definitely a bit rough for him. Certainly this Defender of Argus on Abar's side, much better than the one on Terrence's. Yeah, and not only was it just Defender of Argus, but Abar had multiple ways that he could unlock potential like that. Forbidden Ritual does get picked up though. All right, the question is, does he want to play it this turn? He'd only get three one ones, but that would be three knives and then, you know, some trade potential on board. And it looks like he is going to go ahead and do it. Where are these knives going to go? All right, that's pretty good. It's usually a pretty good per Anytime you can take out. Oh, well, all right. I, returning the favor here. Look at Abar, just cannot wow. believe what happens. Phenomenal turn for Terrence. It, it, the motions in Abar's face kind of went from like, no, that's really bad to just laughing to just, no, that's really <laughs> bad again. <laughs> well, both guys have had some some pretty nice knife juggler, uh, you know, hits this game. So as mad as you are about it, it's sort of a sort of a one for one at this one. point. It's just the way the game rolls sometimes. It's just um, the way of the zoo mirror. <laughs> indeed. Still some very uh, strong reload here from Abar, though. Um, so Terrence with the Forbidden Ritual pickup and the uh, very nice juggles that he got Suddenly, the situation doesn't look nearly as bad. And that's, well, it's getting a little bit worse. Every single time that something like Voidwalker pops up mm -hmm. and all your opponent has is 1-1s, one it's like the perfect card. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Corruption in this case, not really going to find any great <laughs> targets. Possessed Villager is always okay, but the Voidwalker is just definitely the choice here. And what do you think about Abar choosing not to play the Darkshire Councilman this turn? Yeah, I think it's mostly because he picked up the Voidwalker here. In this position, uh, this only gets punished by Defender of Argus. And Defender of Argus isn't really that much of a punish, just able to take it out. So Terrence has his work really cut out for him in a spot like this. You know, typically defenders are, they're supposed to be your big swing turns. Terrence so far has been having to use them to recover. Fine. Yeah, it looks like he's going to have to try and find something to facilitate a trade off of that Dark Peddler. And these are not going to do it. Light Warden, Grimscale Oracle, and another Corruption. This yeah. Is, this is not the dark, kind of Dark Peddler you want. No, this is not <laughs> a championship Dark Peddler, Admirable. Fine. That's why he was the runner-up. Oh, poor Terrence. <laughs> oh, poor Terrence. He was playing Reno Warlock there, don't worry. Hey, you think he would have learned his lesson and just maybe get rid of the class altogether after this, <laughs> who knows? Uh, but yeah, certainly was hoping for something like an abusive sergeant, a power overwhelming would have been really nice here, but all three of these cards just almost equally useless. I'd have to say Grimscale Oracle, probably the worst, strictly because of stats, but... Uh, the only real thing I think you could say about Corruption in that spot is if his opponent plays Imp Gang Boss or Darkshire Councilman, he can he can finish it off with the Corruption at that point. Uh, but 
Either way, just trying to recover the board state, and it has been a massive struggle, and Abar continues to draw the stronger low-costed minions in his build so far. And so the question here for Abar is, would he rather develop another minion or would he rather life tap? I think because he is already ahead on board, you want to keep your hand ahead of your opponents even further. I would probably go ahead and tap here just because I, I feel like it's more valuable than the Argent Squire on board, but he's saying, no, I just want to push my lead as much as possible, and he decided not to. I, do you agree with that? It's, I mean, it's a close call, I think, either way. The fact that he's so far ahead, I'm not really sure it makes much of a difference of what happens. I think this plays a little bit stronger versus some of uh, the, like the one health plays, like if, say, your opponent just has to play Abusive Sergeant. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this plays a little bit better versus that. But Terrence, uh, well, now the corruption doesn't look that bad. This is <laughs> kind of what not I was referring terrible. to uh, with the last one. But the rest of the cards in hand look absolutely miserable. Kind of wishing he picked up that second corruption instead of the Light Warden. At least you could use it on the Argent Squire. I mean, it's just throw it on the Dire Wolf, force a trade. Yeah, a lot of this boiled down to Terrence just not having a buff early enough in the game to make use of. Instead, he mulliganed away a Darkshire Councilman and drew his other Darkshire Councilman. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the worst situations he could have been in uh, as far as mulligans are concerned. Uh, the Defender of Argus pickup for Abar, really nice. He can go ahead and put that on the Argent Squire if he wants to trade off the Divine Shield for one of Terence's minions. And even though his Darkshire Councilman is going to be killed off because of corruption on the following turn, it's just really not looking good for Terence. But we see a Crazed Alchemist in Terence's hand as well. How do you feel about the inclusion of the Crazed Alchemist in some of these Zulists? I feel like it's really important if you expect a lot of Freeze Mage just to be able to shut down a Doomsayer, or even just expect a lot of Paladin for that matter. I mean, almost every control Paladin list is playing Doomsayer at this point. Uh, so it, having a tool that can fight against that without having to use like, Power Overwhelming or Soul Fire or just investing too many resources into it is a very va valuable tool. Uh, but as far as this game is concerned, uh, just it's not getting the job done, and mostly it's because Terrence just did not have the early game to fight through what Abar presented. Just a victim of the draw in this one, I think. Yeah, just unfortunate for Terrence. The zoom mirror just boils down this way a lot of the time. One player draws strictly better, and it's very, very hard for the other player to catch up after a deficit in the early game. Plays that crazed alchemist on the direwolf alpha because there is simply nothing that it is better to switch the attack and health on the board. Yeah, and looking for uh, to end the game here was Abar. That's not quite it. If he had a little bit more mana, I believe this would be just enough but is missing it otherwise. So it's looking like Defender of Argus Sea Giant is just gonna end up being the, uh, the pan out here, and that will so lock things up. I mean, Abar can push what looks like 12 damage onto Terrence, and when you are at two and you're this far behind on board, that's just it. There, yeah, there's no way to come back. Terrence, I think, probably realizes that, but went ahead and played out the matchup, wanted to, you know, at the very least, get some information on his opponent. It, maybe if he didn't, pay close attention to his deck lists. I'm not really sure, but you, you never want to give up a game, especially at this level of play, especially when a tournament and a match means this much. Just to concede early on, you don't really gain anything from it other than maybe a little bit of time. So he did go ahead and play out the match. Doomguard comes into hand. He's got 10 damage, but it's not going to be enough. Abar is going to take game one, and Terrence concedes to lethal on board. All right, we officially are done with the zoo mirror. <laughs> Which was effectively uh, a mirror match for all intents and purposes, aside from Terrence has got a copy of Dark, I'm sorry, of uh, Crazed Alchemist in the list, and Abar has a copy of Flame Juggler in that slot instead. But otherwise, uh, say Doom Guards and Sea Giant, uh, the builds for both players. And again, typically favors the attacker's advantage, mm -hmm. the player going first, but you got to have buffs or just stronger minions to fight with in general. Just wasn't there for Terrence this time. Yeah, unfortunate for him, but it is only the first game. Abar is going to go up 1-0. Terrence can certainly still come back from that. And how do you feel about, because we've seen a lot of Doomguard and Zulus, but we've also occasionally seen the Leroy. And for a long time, Leroy Soulfire was the more popular list. So which do you tend to favor? I feel like the Leroy makes more sense if you're not running Crazed Alchemist. And if you are running Crazed Alchemist, then I feel like you don't necessarily need Leroy, because the Leroy is there for that massive burst potential. 
Um, but they kind of do go hand in hand. Like, say you just expected a lot of Freeze Mage. Uh, that would be definitely a reason to tech in more cards mm -hmm. for that matchup. Uh, so I can see it kind of going both ways. I think I would tend to hedge my bets in a tournament where you need to win a lot of matches and you can only afford maybe, you know, one match loss total. Um, it's just, it's kind of a debate that I feel like is just never ending because it's just perception. It doesn't really go anywhere with it. Yeah, and it's kind of unfortunate. We've seen a lot more of the Tempo Mage than the Freeze Mage today. There has been a couple Freeze Mage games, but with the inclusion of some of the new Karazhan cards, Tempo Mage just seems like it's been given a little bit of new life, and people are deciding to bring that and instead maybe target uh, some Druid lists and, and ban out you know Shaman instead of Warrior and, and try to you know revamp their, their lineups that way. So it's actually been pretty interesting to see the deck lists and some of the bans today because they've been different than what we saw last week for sure. The other thing that's really interesting to me too about that is with Firelands Portal so recently in the mix, how much time have players had to really test the Tempo Mage matchups with that card into it? I mean, a single card can really impact the way matchups work, and they've had very limited time. So anyone who chose to play that had to feel very comfortable taking a risk. All right, and we're going to go ahead and get into game number two. Terrence is going to queue up once again with his Zoo Warlock, and Abar is going to come at it with the Shaman deck, which we do see a Flame Juggler in. So that's a little bit unusual. It definitely works in this matchup. Yeah, it's certainly a card that was in these matchups really early on uh, for the sort of initial builds of Shaman, but has since been like way phased out. And I'm curious how exactly this, this ended up in here, because if you think about the way that Shaman's panned out, for the most part, it's just been about pure strength. It's not really doing too much strange fighting for the board, but this one looks like uh, one copy Argent Horse Rider, one copy of Flame Juggler, and one copy of Lightning Storm, and outside of that, just a very standard Aggro Shaman build. Yeah, Aggro Shaman with just a couple of tech cards. I like the Lightning Storm, especially in a tournament setting when you know you're going to be seeing a lot of Zoo and a lot of the Shaman Mirror. The Lightning Storm can definitely come in handy, so yes. I like the inclusion of that. Uh, the Argent Horse Rider is usually pretty useful, but I guess you can go with one copy of the Horse Rider, one copy of the Lightning Storm, and it works out reasonably well. And Terrence has it's had another cool. pretty weak zoo opening here. He does have a one drop, but nothing to really follow it up. And Abar does get a little unfortunate with his Flame Juggler hit, but nothing too, too disastrous for him at this point. His opening hand is certainly stronger. He's going to be able to follow up with a Tunnel Trog and a Totem Golem. Yes, perhaps a bit of breathing room here for Terrence as that, as that juggle misses. It's uh, need some fortune with a hand like this one, because you pretty much spelled it out. This is not the kind of zoo hand you're looking for. Typically, you don't want to draw one of your three cards that costs five or more <laughs> in your opening hand in multiples of them. And unfortunately, he got two. The only little bit of hope for him is that because the Shaman does play so many minions, that Sea Giant could potentially be discounted down to something like, you know, two or three mana possibly, which would allow him to play it and maybe try to swing the board a little bit. But for now, it's at eight mana, and Terrence unfortunately has to waste one mana on turn two. Yes, and this will likely be full steam ahead here for Abar. But now with that Flame Wreath Faceless pickup, some very real options in front of him. Uh, I could totally easily just see a Totem up here and roll into Flame Wreath Faceless, but he wants to be stronger on the board position. This will answer Councilman. This will answer Imp Gang Boss. The Doom Guards travel in packs if you're Terrence. This is just <laughs> not the way that you need this matchup to go. It's, oh it's kind of a, just a repeat story of game number one where Terrence needed to find any way to trade up value and it just hasn't been there. Yeah, this is so unfortunate for Terrence, especially because if the zoo has that strong opening curve like they usually do against the aggro shaman that only is running one lightning storm, they usually are able to make those favorable trades and push enough damage. And especially with the sea giant, oh the zoo, gosh. you would think, would have a great shot in this matchup, but Terrence just that totem some really poor luck. That totem is so good for Abar right now. I mean, the board is sticking around. If he traded before, one of these minions was was dying. Mm -hmm. Now Terrence is going to have to expend resources if he wants to kill a minion thanks to that healing totem. He does have the power overwhelming, but. You know, when the Flame Wreath Faceless comes down the following turn, he's going to have no tools to deal with it. And after Abar trades minions, which we assume he will do, yeah, he, he goes ahead and trades yeah, the, into two of the tokens. The trading here is always superior because of Sea Giant, but if you're just going to throw all that away by playing the Abusive Sergeant so that your opponent can play Sea Giant again, I am a little bit more confused by the trades. Yeah, that 
does not make much sense because it does actually allow Terrence to go ahead and play the Possessed Villager, which he just drew, which for once is a nice draw for Terrence. And then he can go ahead and just follow that up with the Sea Giant. I think maybe Abar just didn't, uh, didn't stop to consider Sea Giant as a possibility. Yeah, so Terrence with the decision of peeling damage off board or killing a healing totem. And they both kind of do the same thing where it gets you closer to killing your opponent's minions, but when your hand is power overwhelming so and two doom guards, I feel like peeling the most damage off your opponent's board possible is probably gonna be a better route to victory because it's very clear a win condition for him at this point is sticking a sea giant or a doom guard to the board for multiple turns. Yeah, just really unfortunate for Terrence, especially since when you play Doom Guards, obviously you play them in twos and you don't want to draw them at the same time because then, assuming you discard the other one, well, you only get to play one Doom Guard. On the bright side, 33% of the time, he'll have two Doom Guards. That's true. So if that was just in his deck instead, he would be, I don't know, say like 22 to 1 to draw an extra Doom mm -hmm. Guard. Now instead, he's 33% chance to have an extra Doom Guard. <laughs> Oh man, and uh, Terrence actually chooses to run his token into the healing totem instead of going face for one the damage. Why do you think he did that, Admirable? Uh, to prevent like abusive sergeant and flame tongue totem. Uh, if it's at one health and it wants to run into a one one, obviously buffing it doesn't do quite the job uh, that it would before where it would stick around because it got two health. It's a very astute play from Terrence to catch that. Very astute, but unfortunately for him, uh, that little bit of forethought didn't quite pay off. Abar does play the Flame Wreathed Faceless, and once again, that Healing Totem getting exceptional value. Now, honestly, with the M King boss draw and the Sea Giant not actually dying last turn, I'm really surprised that he went with Flame Wreath over trade into the Sea Giant. Now the Sea Giant just kills the Flame Wreath Faceless, and he gets to develop M King boss alongside of this. And suddenly, the Doom Guard's not looking that bad. No, especially if Terrence is able to draw one of his earlier drop minions. If he can pick up um, one of those Void Walkers, uh, maybe an Argent Squire, then he can go and play a one drop along with the Doom Guard on turn six. That would actually be a pretty significant board swing. Yeah, I mean, this is a really important turn for Terrence. I'm curious if he's considering going face or trading over the Totem Golem. I certainly think those would be a little bit out of line. And the Flame Wreath needs to be traded over because it's threatening his life tone. And the way that Terrence is going to win at this point is just by trading down the board and life tapping to get more resources. Uh, so that's a very big deal for him to be making these trades and just forcing slightly awkward turns on an A-bar turn after turn. All right, and A-bar does have a nice board clear here. That healing totem going to be getting even more value off of the totem golem trade into the imp. And Terrence is left with doom guards in hand. Okay, he does pick up a one drop. It doesn't do much, but hopefully it will end up trading into that Argent Squire and finally getting it off the board. Yep, so Terrence has actually kind of assembled his win condition at this point, which is get the board to a safe state, be at a relatively high life total, and hope my opponent doesn't draw Doomhammer. But that's exactly what Avar's drawn. Oh man, how does Terrence combat that Doomhammer? He does have Defender of Argus in deck, but to play the Defender of Argus, he would need to amass some form of a board, which the Doomhammer just cuts down so, so efficiently. Wow. And Abar gonna really turn his life total into a resource here. Spends 10 life to outright kill the Doom Guard. And since he's seen a Doom Guard dis get discarded and he knows that Sea Giant's gone, I don't really think that this is that crazy. In fact, I feel like it just makes sense. I mean, when you don't have to worry about any more burst from Terrence because both Doom Guards are gone and the only Sea Giant is already off the table. And now he's seen both power overwhelmings. Well, there you go. I mean, your life is essentially going to go uncontested if you can keep the board clear, which is what he's doing with the Doom Hammer. So it now makes perfect sense. Now that's a really bad draw. And if you're gonna if you're gonna play Shaman, this is gonna happen sometimes, but this is the stage of the, of the game where Abar needs to be drawing high value minions. And, I, and we're talking about like this, his Tuscar Totemics, his Feral Spirits, his Thing from Belows, basically anything that does something to the board is what Abar needs at this stage. Yeah, this is where uh, Ancestral Knowledge used to really come in handy in the Shaman decks. They would give you those really crucial two cards. The Overload didn't usually matter because you usually played them later in the game after you'd run out of steam, but we've seen those really phase out of the Shaman decks, so now he's just relying on, you know, drawing those bigger minions off the top of his deck. He does have second Doomhammer, so he will have a consistent source of damage if he draws that weapon, but 
for now, that lightning bolt is <laughs> probably going to get some some value off the councilman. I mean, that's the best I can really see for it. Uh, I think that I think it's exactly what Terrence wants too. Is is for that situation to come up. Um, so this is I really like that he's gone for the councilman and the peddler here instead is because I I really feel like he's hoping that a bar invests into this board state rather than does not. Every single time that Abar chooses to put damage into his minions, it means that Terrence is coming away with a little bit of damage and then also making a push. But if you're just going to draw Rockbiter, just that, let's just do that and then go ahead and end the game. Now yes. the Lightning Bolt looks like a great draw. Just lethal for Abar. <laughs> Terrence looking like he, he tried to crawl his way back into the matchup. It looked like it was working out for him a little bit. If he'd managed maybe a couple more turns, a few more high quality minions, maybe he could have come back into it. But Abar with that Rockbiter weapon draw is just going to take game two, putting Terrence down 2-0. That Zoo Warlock just not able to catch a break right now. Yeah, I mean that once again, kind of a victim of his opening hand. Uh, in this one, it's sort of you live and die by uh, those kinds of draws. You know, for every control game that gets a poor opener where it doesn't have answers to stuff, there's an aggro game out there where you don't actually get to play stuff for your opponents to answer. And in an aggressive mirror match, if your opponent has any threats and that's the case, it's very difficult to, to return from that. But he did a really great job at it. I mean, he kind of identified that trading down was the resource he needed to win. And that's the, kind of the way he tried to execute. And it just, like, once again, didn't pan out for him. Yeah, even after that very weak opening hand, Terrence was able to identify his win condition and sort of manipulate the board state as best as he could, trying to draw those outs and trying to put the game back into his favor. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and now Abar is down to match point with his Druid deck. The Druids, however, have been underperforming a little bit today, and we see from Abar it is a token Druid, but it does cap out at Onyxia. Yep, is going to choose to keep uh, Wild Growth and Wrath here as well on the coin. And so he's kind of laughing. It's a, I, I'm guessing the other two cards are very strong. And oh, oh my gosh, Cora, that hand is disgusting. Admirable, if you had to pick a hand of four cards against a zoo deck. Why? I would replace would the wild growth with one other card, and that's it. <laughs> this would be pretty close. And there's a swipe. Wow. Abar just has all the answers right now. Now, in last series, we saw just saying go for this exact same thing, and it was against a Voidwalker, and Power Overwhelming came out and shot down the Fandral. So that's really the one thing Abar's hoping to fade here is either double abuse of Sergeant or Power Overwhelming. And once again, Terrence does not have a way to deal with this opener. Oh my goodness. And this, for all intents and purposes, this seems like a good zoo opener. He has the abusive sergeant. He can trade with his opponent's minions. He does have answers for the upcoming turns. But in this case, it was power overwhelming or bust. And unfortunately for Terrence, he just didn't get it. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is why Druid is very strong with Innervate, is because when you Innervate out of Fandral and your opponent does not have an answer, uh, it typically feels very uncomfortable. Like, even, even if Abar didn't have Wrath in hand, obviously Terrence doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. So just the amount of board tension that Fandral is creating makes the game that much harder for Terrence. And so because of that, you'll often see him deviate from, from what may look like a standard line of play simply for the sake of a fear of the Fandral. Well, Fandral is one of the highest priority targets in this Druid deck. I mean, if, if Abar... Oh, oh well. my. I was going to say, if Abar had something like a Living Roots, which could destroy one of Terrence's minions and put board pressure of his own, and there it is. What do you think he's going to go with here? That Wrath certainly is nice because you get to cycle as well as kill off a minion, but that Living Roots just seems so strong right now. Yeah, I think you're going to be able to cycle the Wrath uh, pretty much no matter what, given what's just happened. And I imagine Abar's kind of chalking this up to Dire Wolf Alpha is going to go ahead and kill my Fandral, so there's not really much reason to do anything with it. Uh, but Terrence doesn't have a buff. So oh my if he does not life tap into Abusive Sergeant or just nail something perfect and just builds more board tension with Crazed Alchemist, and this is kind of exactly how Terrence can get punished. This is one of the only ways uh, that he could get punished, and it's just this is the situation we're in now. If Abar manages to draw Raven Idol or another Living Roots off this as well, it is, I'm not sure Terrence can be able, is going to be able to win after that. We do see the Nourish come into Abar's hand, which is one of the best cards oh that, my gosh, that you can Abar. combo with the Fandral. And you can see it in his face, too. He's like almost apologetic oh my <laughs> with the goodness, way it's been it's showing up. Wing. Holy moly. It's going to be almost impossible for Abar to lose this game, Another Living Roots. Have you seen a nuttier Druid draw today? I mean, this is, this is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's about as good as it's going to get. Terrence just lacking 
um, barely the tools to get the job done, and it's going to continue to get worse. Now, now Abar has Deathwing and he has Yogg on uh, if he gets to a late stage and manages to fall behind. And so Terrence is just, he has to nail this one and three, I think, or that's it. Yeah, a little bit, I would say questionable that Abar decided to uh, trade in the Fandral, uh, putting it down to one health instead of trading in that Sprout. But I mean, it worked out for him and Terrence just really needing some way to come back into this game. Well, Second living roots. Abar has drawn a pair of wild growths. And at this stage, we're kind of way past the wild growth being super beneficial part. Um, so the only thing for him to think about is is really either ramping to Deathwing or just ramping so that he can unlock the nourish value better. And suddenly in this spot, Terrence just he has to play Doomguard, and I cannot, I do not think he can afford to trade at this point. I think it's just go face and hope that this Doomguard goes unchecked for the rest of the game. Absolutely, he does have the second Doomguard still in deck, unlike last game. <laughs> so if he's able to draw that Doomguard, maybe get uh, Power Overwhelming, something to deal some damage, then he is still in this game. But Abar has all the potential in the world with that second Wild Growth, the Nourish to draw for cards, and can't forget about Deathwing, who's only four turns away. Right, Abar could shut down this, uh, this Doomguard right now, but it would cost him quite a bit. At that point, you're looking at Forbidden Ritual being very strong against him, just a, just a swarm of one health minions in general. Uh, what What is it worth to take five damage for a little while versus use the resources at his disposal right now? So this is kind of an interesting turn for Avar, where uh, I'm even looking at like maybe Nourish Wild Growth not being that bad simply because he has Deathwing. And, and in this situation, he's not going to want to draw a ton of cards and then play Deathwing. He's just going to want to play Deathwing. So, mm -hmm. And so I think that's something else to, that he's thinking about when he uses his swipe this way, is that in the event that Terrence has Forbidden Ritual, he could just oh. ramp and then down. He's kind of got, he's kind of got Terrence in checkmate. There's the Forbidden Ritual. Terrence is going to go ahead and tap and get four of those tentacles from the Forbidden Ritual. Abar has just used his swipe, but on seven mana, there's the second well, swipe. Well, sometimes you just draw another swipe. <laughs> I mean, what else would you really like? It's like, all right, you got seven mana, you can have an Ancient of War, or we'll just go ahead and give you the second swipe. We'll get that out of the way right now. And uh, he's going to go ahead and use that Wild Growth, ramping him up to nine mana for the next turn. Not quite enough for Deathwing just yet, but... And just in case uh, you felt worse for Terrence, get ready to feel even worse, because Deathwing is going to be following up very soon. Uh, and if Abar manages to draw Innervate, that would do it but even draws scenarios every single time Terrence has tried to launch an assault, Abar has had a check to it. Abar just looks like he can't even believe his own luck. Like that is the face of a man who's like, wow, I am so sorry <laughs> that I'm, this happened to you. I, I would never be sorry. I love when I get lucky. It's awesome. Oh, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure he's loving it right now his, too, but. His deck building has been basically the major choice of his lineup so far. He's just, he's you know, brought very strong lineups and mm -hmm. it, Terrence has played Zoo three times in a row and Zoo has struggled. Get it out. Get it out. Terrence is going to try to clear off as much of the board as he can. He gets rid of those Treants, does push face, and for once, it looks like he has a favorable board position. But, but he's at nine. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, Abar just needs to calculate if he can even lose from here. Because honestly, attacking face might just be totally okay. <laughs> yeah, just attack Knife Juggler, protect all the whelps, and say go. Oh uh, my that, gosh, <laughs> look at that. Shrug. It's like, meh. Let's, let's play Onyxia. Like, why not? What can you do? Oh man. Ooh. And you know what? It's not quite as stylish as if he dropped the Deathwing. But still, it, it, it's this is pretty a better good. Play. This, this keeps a 5-5 on board. Gets an 8-8 value. Uh, it probably gets more from Terrence in the long run, and I just don't see the way he's climbed back into this. Peddler is just absolutely no His help. His Peddlers have been so bad. Not a single power overwhelming. The Corruption would be okay if he wasn't at 7 health. Yeah, that's just going to do it. Terrence going to scoop it up, and just no luck for Terrence in this one. Abar uh, just having great draws and playing on curve. That, that, that's enough to beat Zoo. I mean, Avar just looking genuinely shocked at how well this match has gone for him. 3-0 against Terrence M. Second place at DreamHack Austin. Finished top four in DreamHack Montreal just a couple weeks ago. And now, you know, down 3-0. That's incredible for Avar.
Yeah, definitely can see where that uh, rank one for Freeze Mage or for Reno Mage came from. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And let's go ahead and check in with Saddle at the Blackboard for some of his insight. Thank you, Cora. And yeah, my, my heart just goes out to Terence on that one. Honestly, a, a devastating series of draws with Zoo, which is a deck that's supposed to be able to draw pretty consistently, but he just could not get it together and he is going to be in trouble in this bracket. But let's take a look at the state of the bracket as a whole and take a look at which players are still fighting away with one more game left to play today. Any name that you still see lit up here. So Rosti, for example, Tere, who we've seen on stream, Lemurian as well. All of these players are in with a shout of making it through to one of the elimination games which we will see tomorrow so us central still hanging in there just saying my pick is hanging in despite losing that game on stream us east still plenty of big names in there as to be expected with the amount of big names that started out canada not doing so great but defending champion cydonia is still in with a shout he is going to be the, in the game that you see on stream coming up next uh, Latin America just down to a couple of representatives at this point. Uh, so not looking too great for them. And we'll see how the Tavern Heroes are doing finally. Uh, just two, I believe, left standing. I know three missed Timmy there at the, in the top right. So a couple of Tavern Heroes still flying the flag for the Tavern Heroes as well. But speaking of Tavern Heroes, let's take a look at another Fireside location. I think we have some insight into the Seattle location here. Uh, a couple of players around here, but I'm not sure if they're playing a game or watching the stream, but still obviously a good community atmosphere right now. I wonder if they, they know they're being broadcast right now. Might it be a wave to camera coming? No, it just looks like they're going to profile the camera a little bit. Fair enough so since that game that we just saw was a pretty quick 3-0 there are not too many more updates to give you i can tell you that dog is still plowing through the lower bracket at the moment he picked up another 3-1 win over night tempo and yo it's flow who is admirable's pick who is still on the board here also picked up a 3-0 victory but we have one game remaining left today this last game and the games that happen simultaneously all the locations around the americas are going to go a long way to deciding who is going to be in the elimination games that you will see tomorrow. So uh, standing by to take you through this final game is the combination of TJ.